My name is Shashi. Welcome to All Saints this morning. Now, we've just had our Bible reading then, and my suspicion is that many of us have heard this story before. Have we? Can I get some hands up? Yeah, we've got a few hands up. So, a very familiar story. I'm going to start here, and I want you to tell me what happens to the seeds there, okay? The first soil, where the seed lands on the path, what happens? The other rows don't, don't interrupt. Anyone? The birds eat it, that's right. I found these beautiful um, embroideries done by someone about this, uh, about this parable. All right, row two, sorry, column two. Oh, I've gone back off again. Wait, well, yeah, I think it's the... This just won't stay. Okay. No? Yeah. It's not staying. I'll try and keep it very calm. Um, so, column two... What happens with the second kind of soil where the seed lands? Do we remember? No? Yeah. This, the soil is so shallow, it doesn't keep growing. All right. You guys, what about the third kind of soil? No? Yeah. Now, this is a strange picture because they've drawn it kind of as strange weeds, but you get, you get the picture, right? The weeds actually grow and choke the plants. Of course, the fourth soil is the one that we all want to be like. Uh, and this person's drawn it as a beautiful, strong oak tree rather than lots and lots of sheaves of wheat. Um, because the fourth soil is the one that, oh, seed, sorry, fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60 some a hundred times. It's a wonderful illustration, isn't it? Simple yet effective, easy to understand, but at the same time with so much depth and insight. Even where Jesus was teaching in verse one, it explains that he actually gets in a boat and teaches to the shore. And that word is the same word that he uses when he's describing the soils. He's a really good teacher. And appropriately, we focus on these four different responses uh, as the seeds grow in four different ways. We often kind of go, so am I one of them? Am I maybe the one that got eaten by the bird? Was I the one that is choked up by the concerns of the world? Or am I like that fourth one that grew up strong? Well, while I was reading this passage in preparation for today, I actually kind of had two questions, two mysteries, two secrets that I think we need to look at that often get overlooked in our reading. So here's the first one. Let's read. When Jesus was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked him about the parables. Jesus told them, the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, Everything is said in parables so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. I'm sorry, but why would Jesus want to confuse his listeners? I thought teachers were meant to make things more clear. And if you've had a bad teacher, I'm sorry, don't answer that question. Doesn't Jesus like his audience? Why is he saying they will be ever seeing but never perceiving? What does he mean? And I felt really uncomfortable when I read this. So I had to think for a bit. Now some of you might know that I was actually born in China. My family left when I was one and a half. 
And at that time in China, they weren't giving birth certificates and children didn't get passports. So my mum actually had my passport. There's a photo of her holding me. And all the adults around me talked lots about trying to get a different passport. They wanted an American one or an Australian. They didn't want to keep their Chinese one. I suspect there's quite a lot of people here who've had the same problem, right? Or who have relatives that have tried for the same thing. So I asked my mum, why, what's the benefit of the Australian or American passport? She told me, it's so much easier to travel. You get so much more freedom. Along with that, having that passport, being a citizen of the US or of Australia gives you so many more benefits. The thing is though, trying to get that citizenship was not easy. It was something that the country got to decide whether we received it or not. I didn't get to decide. So you might be lucky and you might have been born in the right country at the right time like my husband who was born in Australia and he just automatically got an Australian citizenship. So did my brother, he was born in the US, he just got that citizenship. If you were unlucky, you might have been born a few years later when you didn't get that benefit. And the thing is, it's not something that we got much saying. And so when Jesus says he tells these parables to confuse, to hide, it almost sounds like He's being a bit of a passport snob, isn't he? So that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving and ever hearing but never understanding. What's going on? Why isn't he just letting people into the kingdom of God? Well, we have many immigrants and a few refugees, I suspect, in our Dinka congregation. We probably have even more people who know what it's like to have missed out and not be in on that citizenship or that secret. And for some of us here, we know what it's like to be blessed with that knowledge. And so for us to understand this a bit better, I thought we could go back to where he actually quotes this from. These two verses are actually from the book of Isaiah. It's a prophecy, a message that Isaiah the prophet gave to the Israelites. He doesn't just preach it just because. He actually only does it after God has already warned the Israelites many times of the impending takeover and destruction of Jerusalem by Babylon. When God tells Isaiah to preach this message, he's actually doing it after they've given the Israelites many, many chances. And God knows that when Isaiah preaches this message, their hearts will be hardened. So rather than thinking that Jesus is saying something that is purposely obscuring and confusing his listeners, there's probably a slightly better translation which David Garland gives us. He describes it as, so that they may indeed see but not perceive and may indeed hear but not understand. Okay, that's the same as the first part, I think. Because the last thing they, the Israelites, want to do is to turn and have their sins forgiven. These two verses from Isaiah are a prophecy that Isaiah preaches after God has warned them so many times and after God knows that it will harden their hearts. It is only after Jerusalem is taken over that the Israelites understand. In the same way, it's only after Jesus dies for the people that are listening on the shore that they understand what he was saying. Again, David Garland explains, this mystery, the mystery that Jesus mentions, is not a mystery in the sense that it is incomprehensible, but it is a secret, uh, but it is a secret in that not everybody knows it. It was a secret that they would finally understand after Jesus had died. Isaiah's audience that received his prophecy was skeptical of the coming destruction, but they understood after Jerusalem was destroyed. In the same way, the disciples didn't understand what was coming, were confused by Jesus' words, 
but did understand once he had died and risen again. Suddenly all the parables made a lot more sense. After Jesus' death though, the disciples would remember what he had said. They would remember this secret that he had shared only with them, this passport that he had given them. And they wouldn't keep it to themselves. He, they were going to share it with the rest of the world. And this is exactly what happened. This seed, God's word, it's been written down. There are Bibles right there in every single row in this building. And in those Bibles is this same message. <clears throat> we have been given the passport into understanding this secret that Jesus told his disciples. Thankfully, not only the disciples were wanting to share it, but many, many Christians down through the ages. And so now, just as we spoke of passports for different countries, we have the Bible in hundreds of different languages. I used Google Translate for this, so I'm sorry if the translation is not great. But we have it in English, which is not the original language the Bible was written in. We have it in Telugu, in Chinese, in Korean, in hundreds of different languages so that all of us can read it and know this secret too. Just as having an Australian passport isn't a reflection of my worth as a person, it's something that was given to me, God has gifted all of us here with this secret through his word. Just as the farmer threw out seeds generously in the parable, God has given out this secret of citizenship into his kingdom generously through the testimony of his disciples written down thousands of years ago, recounted, recopied, translated into hundreds of different languages, shared all across the world. Let this be an encouragement to spur us on. Let us continue to work towards and support the work of others as they translate the Bible too. I can only speak Chinese and not very well. If you do speak many other languages, well done. But let us continue to pray for those who are willing to translate the Bible, who have that skill. Let us continue to pray for our non-Christian family who don't know this secret yet. And let us continue to share it with those around us. Jesus was never a passport snob. Rather, it was always his long-term plan that he would grant citizenship to all who trust in him. Okay, well, we've sorted through my confusion around that passage. Secret number one. What about my second bit of confusion? I always have read verse 8 and been confused about how. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew and produced a crop, some multiplying 30, some 60, some 100 times. How? I don't know many other plants that are that prolific in their growth. I don't think even like gen genetically modified plants can do that. So how can these plants be growing so profusely. But that's the part that we always focus on in the parable. We're going to get you to work. Please change. I think a clue that we have is by looking at what we call this parable. When I first read it, I heard it titled The Parable of the Sower. It focused on how it is God that is handing out those, not handing out, throwing out those seeds to be grown. It is from him and his seeds are always the same. More recently, I've heard it called the parable of the soils. I think the reason why is because those seeds are always the same. The point of the parable is how people, different soils, respond to that seed. I don't think Jesus uses soil and seeds accidentally too. I think he wants us to focus on how those seeds grow steadily, gradually, faithfully, and how God, the farmer, is still throwing out those same seeds.
What does that tell us about how we grow well, though? So, actually, the first three responses to God's word, to that seed, how they grew, are clues. Unlike the first soil, the fourth seed, the fourth soil, welcomes the word of God immediately so it cannot be snatched away by Satan, like the first one. The good hearer welcomes God's word deeply so that it is not weathered sorry, by persecution, not withered by persecution, apologies. No matter where we are, there will be people who don't agree with us. There will be persecution of one kind or another, sometimes more violent, sometimes more subtle. We need to hold tightly to God's word if we are not to be withered by the persecution. A good hearer welcomes God's word exclusively so that they're not strangled by other concerns. It's really easy to be overcome by worry. Needing to be the most popular, needing to be liked, maybe just needing to survive. But holding tightly to God's word will help us more. The first three responses, the first three soils of the parable, accidentally, unintentionally tell us how we are to grow a further crop. The first three types of soil, though, are a warning to us, too, of the reality of the world around us and how many respond to Jesus. So don't feel discouraged. If you try to share about Jesus and your family members don't respond immediately, don't be surprised or discouraged when some of our brothers and sisters fall away. Remember, those first three types of soil did not respond. What it does tell us, though, is just as the farmer keeps spreading that seed, we as the fourth soil need to keep growing, to keep trying, to trust in his word, his time, that it will bring an even greater crop. Just maybe not necessarily how or when we expect. And that unknowing, that delayed timing or negative response, it should not and cannot deter us. So for those of us here who have been Christians for a while, let me challenge you with the knowledge that if indeed you are that fourth kind of soil that keeps growing and wants to grow a greater crop, guess what? We're supposed to grow even more. Keep going. We should keep supporting those ministries that are translating God's word. We are not to grow complacent. Let us support Nungalinya College. I can say it. Not Nungalinya College as they translate God's word into more and more of the Aboriginal languages. Let us support Chris and Grace in their work in Timor Leste. Let them spread those seeds in places that we cannot, so that we know those who have ears, let them hear. Closer to home, let me challenge you to help us here at All Saints with more, some of the outward face, more outward-facing ministries. Mainly music started up this week. We'd love your help. Or maybe come along and assist with the community lunches on Wednesday. We always need more youth leaders. <laughs> if you're not free on a Wednesday, come along on Sunday. Let us as a church be working together to grow this crop. We have been given the privilege of understanding this secret through the recording, the faithful translation, faithful recording of God's word by the disciples and those that followed them. We have been handed this passport, God's word so that we do understand what it means. It isn't hidden knowledge for us. So let us continue to grow, to multiply, knowing that only that one kind of soil produced more seed. Be challenged and encouraged too. And let us work towards the vision that all saints has to develop mature followers of Jesus, 
united in a multicultural community of faith that celebrates, proclaims, and serves among the nations. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that we have this passport, this secret knowledge that we know what this parable means. Thank you that your disciples passed that on, wrote it down, that so many before us has faithfully translated and shared it with others. We pray for those who are continuing to do so into languages uh, who have not yet read your word. We pray too uh, that you would continue to help us uh, to not be distracted by the world around us, to be that faithful crop that grows 60, 40, 30, many, many times more and help us to hold tightly to your word. We pray all of these things in your name. Amen.